So, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Mohit Lad, one of the co-founders and the CEO of the company. And in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to cover a very high level and quick product overview. So we're going to not, not try to go into too many details here, but I want to give you a lay of the land on what Thousand Eyes looks like. And then as we go through the agenda, we'll cover specific use cases in more detail. Uh, so what you're seeing out here is a quick dashboard view of what you see when you log in. So the first thing you'll notice is a small graph up on top showing all the private agents. So remember I mentioned that one of the deployment models in Thousand Eyes is deploying agents in your environment. So this shows an enterprise sort of scenario where you've deployed six private agents into six branch offices that you really care about. And so the greens mean they're working and functional, which is great. If you have any problems here, you'd be seeing reds and specifically seeing where there are connectivity issues. When you get into Thousand Eyes, first time, there are a few things you need to do. First thing, as an enterprise especially, is to be able to set up agents. So once you click on the Add New Agent, you can see we would provide two different means of agent installation. So we have a virtual appliance that you can download as an OVA or a Hyper-V. And then we have a Linux package. And both of these are supposed to be really easy installs, uh, which is basically download and boot up an appliance and put a key in, and it shows up in the list of agents. So once you do that, you would be able to see the agents down there in your list. And once you have deployed a set of agents, the next task would be to start assigning tests. <coughs> Thousand Eyes is active monitoring, so you need to be able to set up tests in order to start collecting data. When I go into adding new tests, you can see the different tabs that exist for entering different kinds of tests. <clears throat> we can do a pure network test, which basically works on any application that supports TCP, so any TCP port you can think of. What most customers typically do is go into the web, and let's say we do login.salesforce.com. You select a a set of agents, so let's select all the private agents. And then some enterprises would pick a handful of public agents just to get an external perspective. So if you have a branch office in Singapore and you want to make sure that your branch office is not very different from a public internet node in Singapore, you would pick some public agents in, in Asia. Um, mostly this works for Asian and uh, European regions. Mm -hmm. In terms of the tests on the web layer, the HTTP server test would give you a basic server availability and response time metric. The server and page load test will actually be loading the entire page and giving you a waterfall of all the objects, but also doing the server availability and response times and so on. And then the transaction test will give you a detailed, you'll be able to set up a transaction which logs in and does a bunch of stuff, and then it'll give you the timing breakdowns for different components. Uh, we support Selenium for uh, transactions, and we also have a recorder. <coughs> Where we are very unique is the ability to set up an application test and then just check this small measurement, uh, enable network measurements checkbox, which will now start to collect intelligence around the network assets that sit underneath these applications. So when I put in something like login.salesforce.com, I can be completely network agnostic, and Thousand Eyes will figure out which IPs are involved, it will map those IPs to BGP prefixes, so start ma monitoring the BGP routes to these prefixes and so on. So even if you're not very network savvy, you can start collecting network information on this stuff. Once you're done with this, when you go into the views, or the dashboard for that matter, let's actually. <coughs> so what I'll do is I'll go into a very simple example and go through the different layers that exist uh, at a high level. So in this particular case, I've started monitoring performance to an app, kepasa.com. And I've chosen this example because it's a very simple example. As we go through the demos, we can deal with more complex ones. Uh, what we're seeing in every view in Thousand Eyes is a timeline which appears on the top right. The timeline shows up to 14 hours of data. So whichever metric you choose, for in this case, we're at availability, so it's 100% and down and so on. If we select response time, you can see the timeline being more up to down. Uh, and the response time will give you time to first byte. So you see a pie chart which shows you the breakdown of different components of your time to first byte. <laughs> One of the interesting things with Thousand Eyes is the jump to view. 
So at any point of time, I can click on jump to and go to a completely different layer. So from a server layer, which is focused on server availability and server response time, I can get into the page load layer. And the page load layer will give me a breakdown of uh, the objects that are being loaded, how long different things take. It can also break things down by provider. So as you can notice here, we actually go into AS level details for different uh, components or different uh, objects that are coming through and you can summarize based on autonomous system. So focus is very much on infrastructure. Just a quick clarification here. The, the idea of what you're doing is to go out to resources your enterprise is using and see the performance from that location Correct. as opposed to, I've seen solutions like this where you can spread tests all over the globe to, to test your application that you're serving from the internet, yeah. but I haven't seen it flipped on its head and done like this. Yeah, and so that you bring a really important point, which I should have covered, is in this space, when we look at the performance management, every single thing has been built for the providers of solutions, so they're application owners. What we're trying to do is we're trying to serve the consumers of applications, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. that's a very different problem compared to what happens, and so if you're consuming Salesforce, right, you can't instrument Salesforce. You can't tap on traffic at the Salesforce servers. And so that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, and so that addresses your point there, which is, which is right spot on. So now, for this particular app, if you're an enterprise and you are trying to understand what's going on, you notice here there's a dip in availability. So let me go through and click on this dip. The minute I click on this dip, I see certain of the branch offices have turned red. And I can zoom in and interact here, or I can just notice in this particular summary here, that the errors are happening in the connection phase. And so these are the phases that you have to go through, right? DNS, TCP connect to the web servers, uh, SSL negotiation, sending the request, receiving the data, and an HTTP error. What we typically see is if the issues are in the top half of this summary, it's a network problem. If it's in the bottom half, it's an application problem. Mm -hmm. So it's like a very high level view of, is this a network, is this an application? So we suspect it's the network at this stage, but we're going to find out. So what you can do is jump to, go to end-to-end -end metrics, and you can notice here, suddenly the view has shifted from servers to just pure network metrics. So you'll see loss, latency, jitter, and bandwidth. And each one of them will have a timeline, so you can correlate the application behavior to the network metric. Notice here there's a spike in packet loss, and these four locations that were having a problem connecting to the particular app are seeing 100% packet loss. So at this stage, you have established it's a network issue, but you still don't know if it's your enterprise network or if it's the cloud provider or it's somewhere in between. So you can drill deeper from here to go into the path visualization. And what we're doing in the path visualization is laying out everything that sits between the enterprise branch offices and the cloud provider. And we're characterizing the end-to-end -end as well as the hop-by-hop -hop behavior here. So all the branch offices laid out on the left, and then you can see the specific app is being served out of two IPs. One of, the, the one of them is based in in an app, and then the other one here is based in a hosting provider called Neospire. And I notice right away that, that there's one node that is dropping packets. So if I select this particular option, I can see that routes are terminating at this specific router inside of Neospire's hosting environment. Right? And I could highlight any of the good nodes and see that it's going all the way here. But if I highlight the problem nodes, sorry, you can see the routes are, sorry, I have to unselect this guy. You can see the routes are not going past that point. So that's my problem spot. Now, it's a very simple example, but once you've established where the problem is, the question is how do you fix it or how do you communicate it? And that's where we have this notion of interactive sharing, where so we do a sequence of probes, and we're seeing where the responses are coming from. And in the next coverage, in the next talk uh, by our CTO, he'll go into details of like what those probes are and so on. But think of it as you know, a, a version, our own version of a trace route, which is more, which is closer to uh, what real application flows are, since we use TCP. And then we have hmm. an intelligent inference mechanism that we've built on top that can just infer where the problems are as well. So what, what do you think we're on here? This is in the jump to. 
where it was. So we're in path visualization here on the jump two. So this is the tab here which shows which sector we're on. So once you've established that this is a problem, this is a part that a lot of our customers really like, which is sharing this information with others. And so if you are an enterprise, what you could do is two options. You could either share a snapshot, which is a specific interval of time that you want to share with the cloud provider. In this case, let's say I'm interested in sharing four hours of this data. And I could put something like kepasa.com and write a message here and then hit send. And what will happen is the cloud provider will get this specific link. So if I enter this link right here, this is what they will see. And they don't really have access to 1000 eyes. That they don't have to have access to 1000 eyes at this point. But they can get this information down here. And they can go back in time to see what was the situation before the event. And actually go back here and see that there was an actual outage here, which was affecting the actual application behavior. When they go into the HTTP server view, they can see the, the dip in availability and so on. And there is a few different advantages to this sharing. You can obviously share with the cloud provider directly. If you know the problem is on your upstream side, you can share it with your upstream ISP. So when we're observing the sharing behavior, we see this sharing done across different ways. We even see sharing done internally within the organization. So we see sharing done where the network guys would immediately create a share and send it to the CIO saying, it's not us. Don't yell at us. And that's something that you know, the network guys like a lot because it takes the blame off them right away, which is the, we actually have a nice little t-shirt here. And this was one of our motivations for providing network visibility. So you can see here, as it says, the network is always guilty until it's proven innocent. And <laughs> our objective is to try to bring as much transparency through this process as possible. Uh, you could send this to Nanoc mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing you can do is, if you're receiving a link you don't understand, you can hit the live chat and actually ask us, what am I seeing here, or how do I interpret this data? And our success team, our customer success team, is actually very well trained to understand these events. So they will help you understand what you're seeing and help you actually troubleshoot it as well. We also have things like a page guide. So if you're new to this page, you can hit a page guide, and it will basically overlay what different components are and just give you an overview of what you're seeing and so on. It basically gives you a view of what your customer would see. The other interesting sharing thing is the live sharing, which will let enterprises always share data with a SaaS provider. And as a SaaS provider, you get basically free data from all your customers uh, for all the performance problems they're having. And so you can react to it faster than the customers would know. But if you're a SaaS provider and not using 1000 eyes, and this has happened before, we've had an enterprise customer actually call a large SaaS provider and say, your upstream router is flapping BGP routes, and it's affecting our performance. And, and those guys had no idea about this. So the benefit of transparency is, is dual, right? You get both parties to actually agree on something and, and work through things. Uh, internet lets you see hop by hop, but a service provider giving you layer three VPN service, for example, does not. Is there any magic that Thousand Eyes brings there? We'll cover that. So we actually, uh, and so Ricardo will go into things like uh, even MPLS, mm -hmm. and we can infer uh, you know, things like VPLS and so on as well. So there is a lot of network magic that we're putting together that we're excited to share with you guys. And even some examples that we would love to show, maybe in an off-camera discussion, we can go through some that were specifically sensitive and we don't want to share in an on-camera discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so this is sort of a very quick overview of the product. Uh, there's very interesting use cases that we'll be covering in the next half of the uh, discussion. But at this stage, uh, again, I have a minute left or 50 seconds. So I'd like to take a pause and just uh, answer any questions, if you guys have any questions around this product overview. So to be able to do this path analysis, you must create your own map of the network infrastructure itself. So you're you're, you would be collecting BGP data to understand how the network graph of the internet looks to be able to chart we, that sort of stuff out. Yeah. We have lots of BGP data as well, and I haven't shown you in this view. BGP will be covered in one of the sure, use but cases. but I'm just saying conceptually, you have yes, to be able to do. have a lot of. We do, and so you know, our background as founders and the core team is we spent eight years doing BGP research. So 
Yeah. It's really... Uh, so you had feeds from all... Had the, feeds from yeah. all the different sources. And currently, we're working off public mm -hmm. feeds mm -hmm. from projects like RouteFuse and Ripe. But we have ongoing ah, okay. uh, projects that uh, are going to take live feeds from the customer side. The other thing I'd like to say is our BGP information is outside in right now because we're collecting feeds from the external point. So we won't be able to give you an inside-out BGP view, but that's very easy to add on because you can get a live router feed from uh, one of the routers inside your environment as well. And we don't want to do that to complete the entire picture. So that's something on the mm -hmm. roadmap. Uh, so you're taking gripe feed, and they have like hundreds of collecting points. Yeah. And so that's the control plane view. We, I haven't shown that here, but mm -hmm. we have that intelligence. Uh, we also have lots of you know, information around who's announcing which blocks and so on, so we can mm -hmm. map all those to yeah, specific cool. IPs. But that's how you create the graph, right. so that yeah. you can analyze the path. Right, yeah. and so, and this particular one is more created by active traffic that we generate by, you know, at layer three. So this is really the forwarding paths, yep. which may or may not be the same as the control paths, right? And so the control path view, the BGP view will be shown as well. So when, you, when you're looking to extract on-prem, are you just going to use SNMP, or are you going to build BGP sessions or to one of your boxes? What's the mechanism you're going to collect that data? Can you repeat the question? What's, the, what's the mechanism you're going to collect the data from on-prem, where the box lives? Okay, that's a good question. So the question is around what's the mechanism to collect data from on-prem environments, right? Mm -hmm. We're not doing any SNMP at this stage. Whatever we do is based on the concept of putting agents that will generate traffic to discover the environment. And so it's like active probing. Right. And then we have projects in place right now that will take IBGP feeds and so on, but they're very early stages and it's not in production mm -hmm. yet. Cool. And let me guess, you're doing trace route with TCP scene packets or something like that. Yes, it's a flavor of trace route, and uh, there's lots of issues with trace route. So I, I would point you guys to the blogs that Ricardo uh, wrote uh, a few weeks ago about problems with traditional network trace routes and so on. Uh, and collecting data is one thing, but also inferring sort of heuristics on top to actually infer where the issues are mm -hmm. is also interesting. So, 